Hello and welcome back to the second part on this video about painting and weathering tanks. It's time to start the weathering process on Tamiya's 135th scale Shah B1 Bis. We're building this model to represent a specific tank and the intention is to make it weathered and realistic. The last video covered construction, priming and base coating. It also showed how the realistic and distinctive wavy camouflage was applied before everything was sealed with floor polish and decals applied. The tracks were also painted and the model was ready for the weathering process. If you want to find out more, make sure you check out our last video. To start the whole process, we began with the tracks. The tracks receive washes in rust colours from MIG Productions. These are enamel based ready to use washes and are excellent for this kind of application. Just give a liberal coating to the tracks in a rust colour of your choice. You'll see that you can speed things up with a hairdryer and another great way to make everything that bit faster is to combine enamel based products with water based products as you'll see. With the tracks done it's time to add a dark shadow wash to the model itself. First of all a liberal coating of white spirit is applied to the model. This will help the wash to flow freely. With the model moistened take a bit of the dark wash and apply it to all the shadow areas. Just make sure that the dark wash is applied to all the shadow areas around the details. It can be very messy and uncontrolled at this stage. Here you can see the dark wash settling around rivets and into recesses and nooks and crannies. Work your way around the whole model and make sure the dark wash goes into all the lines and recesses. Don't worry too much about time marks, as you'll see with more white spirit you can gently remove them and blend in the dark shadow wash. The idea being that you leave enough around the rivets for the effect to remain pronounced. Keep working the sides of the model and the clear areas in between all the rivets and on the main panels to blend everything in. Don't worry too much if it's unsightly at this stage. One of the great things about enamel washes is you can constantly retouch them with a bit more white spirit. A decent quality soft brush is best for this process. In the course of this video you'll see that weathering is actually a multi-layered process. But to start everything off, washes are the first step. Once done you can blend it further and remove any excess with a wide flat brush. Here you can see the model just being reworked and more dark wash being carefully applied. Again just keep the brush moist and laden with thinners and you'll start to get a nice effect appearing. You'll see that the details pop out and the model looks more three dimensional than when it's base coated. Also if you look carefully the beginnings of streaking lines are visible. Any little tidy ups and cleaning can be done using a q-tip or cotton bud. If you don't have white spirit any other kind of manufacturer's own brand or mineral spirit type product will work. But it's best to check on a scrap model or on a spare test piece first. With that done the model is definitely looking more shaded and shadowy and dirty and grimy.
That was a more general wash. The next stage is to apply a pin wash. This is basically the same process but a lot more localised. Concentrate on the details themselves and apply more dark wash using a smaller, thinner brush. If before the wash looked dirty and uneven, this will help make it more even and better looking. It will add a more intense dark shadow around specific details that you choose to pick out. Here you can see the effect. There's a subtle but effective shadow around most of the surface details. Thanks to the enamel washes, the model looks much better. To speed things up, in the next stage, acrylic washes are used. These just use Tamiya acrylic paints with a bit of water to apply a dusty, muddy finish to the tracks. Apply in the same way as enamels and allow to dry. Once done, you get a little layer of dirt and dust. It was decided to add light rust effects on top of what we've done so far. Now it's time for an old fashioned modelling technique that isn't always as popular as it used to be. Dry brushing is a great and useful technique to bring highlights to the model. In this case, enamels were used. We tend not to use enamels that much for painting, but we do use them for weathering. And we've got a stash of old Humbrol enamels on the workbench. Take a wide flat brush and load it up with paint, but remove as much as you can on a paper towel or scrap of paper. Then just gently dry brush the model by whisking the paint over the top of the surface details. It should leave a small deposit of paint that creates a highlight effect. In this case we're using the green tone just on all the green parts of the model, and you'll see later on we use the sand colour on the sand parts. The effect is subtle and you shouldn't overdo it. The advantage of using enamels is that you can of course clean it all off with thinners if the effect is overdone. If you look at these stills you can see how now all the surface details are highlighted and it combines well with the wash we did previously. Shadow and highlight is a fundamental principle in modelling. Once again it was time for a water based wash using Tamiya paints. This was applied liberally around the wheels and suspension area as well as the tracks. It was followed up using some pigments. You can either apply them dry by brush or you can combine them with water or white spirit. Here they've been used wet all over the model. Brush it on liberally because it can always be tidied up afterwards using something like white spirit. A cotton bud or q-tip will help with this. Next up we use Life Colors Tensacrom shades. If you want to find out more about them we did a video specifically on these products. But they're liquid surface agents ideal for weathering. Their earth shade was applied liberally to create dust. As you'll see it settles in pools and irregular shapes which is actually a good advantage. It may look stark at present when it's wet but you'll see that it'll dry very effectively. A mixture of sand and earth was applied in other parts of the model like the tracks or the rear. Just keep working it whilst it's wet. Remember that tensochromes once dry can't be removed but you'll see that when they're wet you can actually control them quite effectively and remove anything you don't like with more of the tensochrome medium. It's especially effective when used on top of pigments. Once dry you can see that the effect is very realistic. It looks like pooled or accumulated dust and is quite convincing. At this point it's worth saying that weathering is highly subjective. 
for a lot of modelers this may appear excessive. It all depends on your tastes. The next stage is what's called chipping, and for this task, Vallejo's model color acrylic paints are excellent. They've got great pigmentation and are very controllable. Using a dark shade similar to the one used in the camouflage, tiny little chips are applied with the fine brush. You can also add scratches and all sorts of little marks around the details. How far you go with this is completely up to you and will depend on the use and age of the subject being modelled. One technique is to use a much lighter shade to depict deep scratches. You can see this here with the green. This would really depend on the order in which the tank was painted, but as you can see it starts to show wear and tear in the paint scheme. Another way to apply chips is to use a little piece of foam in a pair of tweezers. You can then dip it in the acrylic paints and very gently apply it to the model. The effect is one of irregular chips and paint effects. We went especially heavily on the exhaust pipe and around the back of the engine deck where there'd be lots of wear. You can see it in a bit more detail around the side access door where these green chips are being applied. Just go very gently and make sure there's not too much paint on the sponge. You can see the effect is really quite realistic. Next up we used some SS Camouflage Black Brown from Vallejo and repeated the process. This depicts very deep chips and scars right down to the bare oxidised metal. Finally we switched to life colours and used two rust tones in the same way, concentrating especially on all the exhaust equipment. The effect of multiple chips applied by sponge can also build up texture as you'll see in these shots. This is especially pleasing on the exhaust pipe, but note too that we applied it to the exhaust pipe shroud to show heat damage and oxidisation due to constant heating and cooling down. The next stage was to use enamels again to create a dust coating. The advantage of working between acrylics and enamels is that you maintain speed. Alternating allows you to keep pressing on with the weathering. We took these two Humbrol enamel shades and mixed them up and applied them very gently in a misted coat by airbrush. Set the compressor to a very low pressure, something like 0.5 bar, and just gently mist the paint over all the areas that would accumulate dust. The other advantage of doing this is it tones down all those chips and different dust effects and products you'd used earlier. It also mats everything down and the model is starting to look more matte. There's still a sheen, but as the process goes on that will gradually disappear. Here you can see some shots of the model in progress. It's certainly very dirty and weathered. Again, more of the lightened shade was applied over the model just to tone everything down still further. Make sure you spray the underside as well. You can start to see in these shots how the gloss finish is beginning to disappear. One technique to get streaks is to use a wide flat brush with enamel thinners. Don't have too much thinners on the brush, but just gently draw it down through the enamel coats you've just applied and it will create streaks. If you use two shades of enamel, it will also create a nice contrast between them and get them to bleed into one another. If you want to find out more about this, we've done a video on the enamel dust technique. The same was done with the tracks using a moistened brush to create realistic dust effects. Next using some rust shades by Life Colour, the airbrush was turned right down to a very low pressure, something like half a bar, and a very fine misted coat of rust was applied over areas of the model, especially at the rear. Before applying more of the same colour to the tracks.
Life Colors Leaking and Stain set was used on the underside of the model. It was mixed up and sprayed all over the wheels and in the running areas. This was just to get a uniform greasy and dirty effect around those wheels. The wheels were then masked off so that they could be sprayed from the side. Just make sure that no bare plastic is visible once the painting is done. Pigments were next from a life colour combination set and these were applied to the model wet using a bit of thinners. Make sure you apply it liberally all over the wheels and in all the dark recesses and areas where mud would accumulate. It will be significantly darker when applied wet and remember it will dry lighter. All the underside, which would of course get very dirty and grimy, was liberally covered in this mess. The tracks too also received a generous coat, before being dried with a hairdryer. Next it was time to create some interesting effects by applying more tense crumb on top. A fine layer of sand was applied to the lower parts of the model and the tracks. In this shot you can see just how grimy the model now is, especially on the underside and where we applied all those pigments. Sometimes where there are large accumulations of pigments applied wet you get some really interesting mud effects. Next up a messy part of the paint job. Two ready-made mud mixes from AK Interactive were used, along with a toothbrush. Dip the toothbrush in the enamel product and then using your thumb or fingers run it over the bristles to get flicks of paint. Obviously this is very messy and it's best to use gloves. But what you get are lots of dark muddy projections on top of all the work you've done previously. Because these are enamel based anything you don't like is just easily cleaned away with a bit of white spirit or solvent based spirits. It was then time to apply a bit more to the underside. This has the effect of depicting little bits of wet areas or wet and fresh mud on top of the dry mud. It's especially effective as you can see in these shots over those pigments. Next up some very light enamels were sprayed over the work done previously just to blend everything in. As you'll see we're switching very quickly between enamel based products and acrylic or water based products and the effect is one of a speedy weathering process where you don't have to wait for things to dry overnight. In effect the enamels seal in all the work done previously with the acrylics. Next up some pigments were applied in wet form in streaks. This was done around the side of the model and the streaks were allowed to dry. They were then blended and smoothed out using a wide brush with white spirit. In particular this was done on the sides of the model where mud would accumulate and then run down. To follow up various oil and wet effect products were used. Again use a toothbrush to project them all over the model. In certain areas MIG Productions oil and wet effects was applied by brush. This replicates moisture and again small oil spills or oil runs. These would be particularly common in areas where the tank would be regularly greased and oiled and maintained. It's worth remembering that products like this do tend to dry matter than they appear when you first apply them. But the effect creates a pleasing visual contrast between the dry mud below and the moisture on top. Here you can see it's starting to dry and the general grease and oil effects on the side of the model. With that done our Shah B1 bis is finished. Hopefully you will have enjoyed this two part video showing the painting and weathering of a model. Weathering is often an entirely personal approach and it's up to you to see how far you want to push it. In this case of a battle used worn tank it felt appropriate to add lots of mud and effects as part of the story of the vehicle itself. We hope that this inspires you to try different weathering effects and play around with different products. As you've seen we don't adhere to one particular paint range, it just depends what's available to hand and they all have different merits and different effects that you can use. Make sure you check out our other YouTube playlists 
and click the bell to receive notifications whenever we release a video. Thanks for watching and we'll be back with more videos soon. Subscribe for our latest videos.